This week's episode of the Equestria Inquirer is brought to you by the Pencil Pacifier, the brand new invention that takes the fear out of writing. This just in! Ponyville has successfully docked with the Interkingdom Space Station! This was, of course, completely unintentional, and to whichever pony had the magical aptitude to teleport an entire small town into outer space, we request two things. First, please never do that again. And second, we believe Derpy is still in outer space. Uh, please return her as soon as possible. Godspeed, Derpy. I'm Joe Stevens, and this is the Equestrian Inquirer, Season 2! This is the Equestrian Quarrer! Okay, that's enough of that. Good evening, Ponyville! Breaking news! Twilight Sparkle hates socks. You heard it correctly, Ponyville. It seems that the purple unicorn with the magical aptitude beyond that of nearly any pony has officially antagonized herself with the wearing of knitted cotton or wool or otherwise manufactured hoof covering garments. Whether they be colorful or plain or those tubes were those fuzzy ones with the little jingly bells on them, Twilight Sparkle hates socks. Ponies all over Equestria are repulsed by this stance and are voicing their opposition to Twilight's sock hatred with an intensity that hasn't been seen since Applejack said she thinks wearing saddles is a little bit weird. Reactions over Twilight's anti-socking have ranged from Fluttershy's, I guess, um, socks are okay to dislike. <laughs> Accompanied by uncontrollable sobbing. To rarities, such a fashion mistake. How can you deny the beauty of socks? To Pinkie Pies, I'll blast 500 piety cannons and blow up your tree berry if you don't put on socks right now. Only blasting herself with a party cannon filled with fuzzy socks covered in little ribbons sated Pinkie Pie's explosive rage. <clears throat> While Twilight has often come out against various things, such as registering of magical abilities with the government, anti-teleportation unions, and giving Spike an afro, her hatred of socks is by far the most controversial. When asked why she would come out against the wearing of socks, Twilight had this to say. <clears throat> We have hooves. Why would we even wear socks? They're just going to get dirty or ripped and make me look like an idiot. Socks are considered integral to the pony community. They are the source of pony magic. They make the grass grow. They make the rain fall. They make muffins. Or at least that's what we guess because, honestly, we don't understand why ponies would need to wear socks either. Sources close to Princess Celestia have confirmed that Twilight will be punished for her anti-socks stance and must write a letter to confirm the lessons that she learned. EQI has obtained a copy of this letter, which reads, <clears throat> Dear Princess Celestia, socks are stupid. Enjoy your time on the moon, Twilight. Has this ever happened to you? You sit down to write something important. You've got your pencil between your teeth and you're scribbling away when suddenly you press a little too hard or your jaw loosens slightly and BAM! Next thing you know, there goes your pencil right down your gullet. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Hi, Billy Hayes here for the Pencil Pacifier, the ingenious new device that makes writing easier and safer than ever. Simply place the Pencil Pacifier at the end of any standard sized pencil. It provides a rubberized bulb that you can chop down on that improves grip and mouth writing legibility, and a large safety disc that prevents accidental swallowing. Plus they come in a variety of colors and they're dishwasher safe. All that for only 20 bits. And if you order right now, we'll throw in a second Pencil Pacifier Pacifier, absolutely free! Think of how great it will be to write something without the looming danger of emergency gastrointestinal surgery! Order today! Continuing our coverage of the election between Princess Celestia and Princess Luna for official Princess of Equestria, as you know, the Celestiacrat and Republican parties are getting more endorsements every day. As part of EQI's election coverage called Ponycision 2012, which 
honestly doesn't make much sense, we will be bringing a guest to discuss which candidate they support and why. Joining us for the first discussion of Pony Scission 2012 is EQI correspondent and head Ponyville table maker, Ivan. Ivan, thank you for coming. Hello, this is Ivan. Ivan is Unicorn Pony from Stalingrad. Ivan make thing. It's good for him. Thank you, Ivan, yes. So, getting down to it, who do you support in the election for Princess of Equestria? What kind of question is this? Ivan reject basis of election in general. So, you're refusing to endorse a candidate? No, no, no. Ivan endorse. Ivan think it's pointless exercise perpetuating unfounded premise of efficiency for democratic system in face of inherent flaws of massive electorate, incapable of making proper decision given lack of knowledge of interpolitical dynamics and flawed premise that this is superior to platonic concept of systematic autocratic rule by highly educated elite. So... Ivan votes Celestia. Ah, alright, could you expand a little bit? Ivan already say. It's simple. Celestia ruling well. It's good for health. Ivan not want rock table. So, stability is your primary concern? Da. Well, what about all the recent incidents of instability, discord, changelings, rainbow dash? Celestia fix problems okay. Table rocking, da. But not rock table more. Celestia like good table. Nice and stable. Easy fix, make with good legs. Makes sense. Like table Ivan make. Yeah. Ivan remember, Ivan brother Dormitri make rocky table. Ivan say, Ivan brother Dormitri, why you make rocky table? We'll make muffins fall off table. But he ignore Ivan. So one day, Ivan brother Dormitri muffins fall off rocky table. Hit Ivan brother Dormitri on hoof. Ivan brother Dormitri trip on muffin and fall head first into fireplace. That's terrible. It's okay. Ivan brother Dormitri get wrapped in bandages and plaster for a long time. For what massive third degree burns. Ivan brother Dimitri so stiff from what bandages, what we use Ivan brother Dimitri as table. Ivan brother Dimitri bandage table very stable and excellent for what he puffins <laughs> on. He's good for health. So there you have it folks, Ivan officially endorsing Celestia for the election of Princess of Equestria. Vote Celestia Krat, not Rock Table. Thank you, Ivan. And here is TechRat with this week's Mayors in a Minute. All right, how do I look, intern? I look good? And I still stand out in front of the blood red background? Okay, great, great, good. Joe, give us just a second here, okay? We're kind of still setting things up. Um, okay, now bring the lights down a little bit. It's still too bright and cheery in here. Okay, that, all right, a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, now give him a bit of an evil reddish glow. Okay, good, good, that's good. Why, why are we doing this? I told you already, intern, we have to be all dark and serious now. You saw Joe's China report from two weeks ago. It was edgy. It was terrifying. It was completely lacking in Mexican food. That's where EQI is going, intern. We're going to be all dark and serious and scary. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to be left off of that bandwagon. So starting today, I'm calling this segment Mayhem in a Minute, and I'm not going to do anything except serious, horrifying stories that will make you cry. Now, we still need something on the screen down here, I think. Um, what about some flames? Can you add some flames across the bottom here? Okay, all right, that's good. That's good. Um, still need something. Uh, how about some skulls? Can you put a couple skulls in there? Ah, good, some skulls. Good, good. Now, um, I need some background music, something really creepy and sinister. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. No, 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 no. Turn that off. Turn that off. Oh, we're not going to take it that far. What are you, a sadist? All right, you know what? Forget about the background music, because I have to get started here, okay? All right, here we go. <clears throat> this just in. It has been reported that every single pony in Equestria will die. Someday. Not entirely sure how, and they probably won't all bite it at the same time, but it will happen, I promise you. And that's because Ponyville is a terrifying place to live now. Arson. Riots. Looting. Murder. Citizens live each day in fear never knowing when a stray bullet or random flesh-eating virus will cut short their adorable little lives. No one is immune to tragedy, not even the children. It has been reported that Shirley's schoolhouse has been experiencing a chalk shortage because of all of the body outlines they've had to draw in the schoolyard. It's also recently come to light that the reason why we've never seen Scootaloo's parents is because they were eaten alive by an Ursa Major. Or they went bowling. It's one of those. And on top of that, Sweetie Belle is dead tired, but that will probably lead to death, which would be good for me because I need a lead story for next week. Okay, now uh, show a grisly image. Um, no reason, just because we can. 
okay, that's an image of a grizzly. But you know what? He does still look kind of scary, so eh, I guess it's okay. And now, a scary list. All the following can and will kill you. Balloons. Squirrels. Picnics. Cupcakes. Twist. It's always the quiet ones. And friendship. Especially friendship. On top of that, Rainbow Dash is reporting that tonight's forecast calls for a 100% chance of doom. DOOM! What, what's that smell? Intern, did you wet yourself? Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me! Well, yes, I know you were terrified. That's why they call it fear-mongering. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. We're going to have to go back to reporting all the namby-pamby articles now because somebody in this studio is a big wussy. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, you're not going to cry now, are you? Oh, come on. Wait, what? No, no, put your headset back on. Where are you going? Oh, is this because I called you a wussy? Come on, I've called you much worse before. Wait, wait, where are you going? No, in turn, come back. Come, come back here. Who's going to give me my foot rub after the segment's over? You always do that. Oh, man. Joe, listen, I gotta go. Now I have to go find my intern. And a mop. Oh man, I stepped in it! No, Plank, you can't have a segment. No, because LTT Moose has his segment. I, I, I know Words of Wisdom with Plank was very, very good, but the last time you said very, very controversial things. You see, see, that's exactly why we can't give your own segment. It's language like that that makes me not want to have words of wisdom with Plank at all. Here's LTT Moose with horseshoes and hand grenades. What a horrible thing to say, Plank! Greetings, citizens! I am LTT Moose, and this is Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. Last week, Equestria experienced an astronomical anomaly known as the Supermoon. For a few nights, the moon appeared somewhat larger than normal. For most, this was merely a curiosity, or even a rarely seen beautiful event to be cherished and celebrated. However, there was one pony who was not amused. <clears throat> we are not amused, stated Princess Luna from high atop her observatory. The princess, who has nominal control over the moon's motions, indicated that this was not of her doing. Instead, this was clearly a direct threat from the moon itself for crimes committed there during her imprisonment. <clears throat> we did unspeakable things during our captivity, shouted Luna, who, despite her declaration, proceeded to speak of those very things at length and in great detail. Among the various misdeeds she listed were <clears throat> kicking moon rocks, building a machine to kick moon rocks, fostering an empire to run the machine that kicked moon rocks, and jaywalking. None of these crimes could be corroborated, as there was no pony else on the moon at the time. Now, Princess Celestia has given Luna a full and complete pardon for crimes committed during her time as Nightmare Moon. However, Luna cited that the moon's unnatural approach to the Earth was proof that the planetary body had not forgiven her and was coming to wreak its vengeance. In her uh, own words, <clears throat> THE MOON IS A HARSH MISTRESS! Luna continued to uh, bellow to an assembly of astronomers at the Royal Cantalat's Academy of Sciences and Muffins. Heed my words! There is a bad moon on the rise! Nay, a bad moon on the rise. By Star Swirl's beard, I said there is a bad moon on the rise. Dost thou wishest me to speak louder, that my words might be heard correctly? At which point, the building was evacuated for the safety of all in attendance. Speculation abounds as to the source of the larger-than-average moon. Everything from a rather admittedly mediocre re-return of Discord, to mischievous pegapodes dispensing water droplets as light reflectors, to science, just science, has been bandied about. This reporter decided to go straight to the source of the only other being with the power to manipulate interplanetary matter.
Princess Celestia. Well, she did not give a straight answer, muttering something about swamp gas, igniting weather balloons in the light of Venus. She did, however, promise swift and decisive action regarding her sister's unfounded concerns about an imaginary encroaching moon warden. Celestia has since flipped Luna's telescope around backwards. Seemingly appeased with the moon's retreat, Luna has nevertheless anticipated further trouble from the inanimate conglomeration of silicates. Uh, to quote her own ramblings, uh, The moon laughs knowingly! The moon laughs! The moon! The Thank you, LTT Moose. And that's it for the first episode of Equestrian Inquirer Season 2. Join us next week where we further examine the election for Princess of Equestria and give Tom his own segment. Here is an audio preview of Tom's new segment. Okay, we'll probably have to cut Tom's new segment. I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been the Equestrian Inquirer. Good night, and good luck. Intern! Intern! Come on out, I have your favorite treats! Intern! Hey, what's this? Tech Rat. Dear Tech Rat, you stink. My hatred for you burns with the heat of a thousand suns. I tolerated you because I needed the work, but today was the last straw. I am sick of your abuse, and I am go not going to take it anymore. See you in Tataris, Mr. Intern Simpson. P.S. In case you were too stupid to realize it, I am quitting. Huh. That's weird. Huh. His first name is actually Intern. All this time, I never even... What? Actors!